Welcome back to Missy's Imaginings. In a previous video, I showed how to draft a pattern from a doll. I used the resin sole male centimeter body to draft a pattern, and those pattern pieces are just the basic pieces on how to design something and those are found on the website. I can also show you a picture. They look like this. So these three sheets are the basic patterns. Now I'm going to actually draft a shirt pattern using these basic pieces so that you can see how you use these pieces to make your own design. Underneath my sewing table, uh, I have my sewing machine down underneath here. There it is. I put a glass uh, plate and then I have a light shining from underneath so it gives a little bit of illumination to see through paper a little bit better. So now I'm going to draft a pattern for a shirt for my David Tennant doll. So I'm going to lay this over the top and I'm going to start with the front piece. Now I know I want this to be a button up shirt so I'm going to go ahead and you do the front first. I'm going to add an overlap, so not only will I have a seam allowance, but I'm also going to have enough to overlap the pieces of the front of my shirt. So I'm adding about oh, 5 eighths of an inch maybe to the front. Now I also know this is going to be a dress shirt. And if you watched the previous video on drafting the pattern, you know that this waist that was cut is the doll's actual waist. So I want the shirt to have enough of a tail that it can be tucked in. So it's going to come down quite a bit from the edge of that basic piece. I also want it to fit a little bit looser, like a dress shirt. I don't want it to be skin tight. So I'm going to come out another quarter inch from the edges of my pieces to give a little bit more fit. Now the front of a dress shirt for a male dress shirt, I want it to have a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to add that curve right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my arm and my shoulder. I'm going to add just a little bit um, to the edges so that that will fit comfortably. Now one thing to, to know is you don't want to add too much extra on an armhole because the more you add then it, it can get tighter and if you go out too far it'll get bigger so I want the armhole to be relatively the same although I am adding more to the side and the front and a little bit to the shoulder and the length so that would be my front piece and I'm gonna cut two of those for a dress shirt now the collar is going to be for a button-up shirt. So I'm going to want to use the piece that has the center back because obviously I want the front of the collar. So I'm going to overlay the blank piece here. I'm going to do my center back. Okay, and now I want that collar to not only come up the height of the neck, but I want to be able to fold it. So I'm going to give a little extra height to that. This line I'm going to keep the same because that's the line that's going to fit my shirt. Here we go. And I'm only going to extend it a tiny bit, not as much as I did the front of the shirt because of course the collar isn't going to completely overlap. It's going to come to the edges of where the shirt overlaps. So I'm just going to add a little bit, but then I want it to flare out so it can have a normal look of a collar. So these fit in to actually fit the neck, but I want my collar to come out. So I'm going to come out a little bit and then I'm going to curve it back in to the center there. So that gives me my collar for my button-up shirt. The next part is going to be the back pieces. Now the back, I like to have uh, on a shirt a yoked back. So what I'm going to do is on my basic piece, I'm just going to draw a pencil because I like to have a yoke on my back and I'm going to draw a line. This would be my seam line. So where this seam line is, if I'm doing the lower half, I'm going to have to add seam allowance to the top. If I'm doing the yoke, I'm going to have to add seam allowance to the bottom. So I'm going to put in my 
back piece. So now I'm going to put the seam line here and add a little bit for that seam allowance because on that collar I already indicated the seam allowance when I traced it. Here I'm going to follow the natural armhole line. Again, I'm not changing that a lot because you can make that way too big. I'm going to add some fullness here. And then on the back, I want to have a pleated back. So I'm going to come out and it's going to be cut on a fold, but I'm going to add oh about 3 eighths of an inch because I'm going to pleat my back. There we go, below the fold line there. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the, the length is matching this length right here. So I'm going to take my tape measure, right here it is, and I'm going to measure how long that side seam is, and I'm right at six inches. So now I'm going to come down here and measure and make sure that I come down and it's right to the bottom of my paper so I barely got it long enough so I might take this up a little bit just to allow there we go I'll adjust that a little otherwise it won't be long enough so I'll come down and there we go a gentle seam allowance so I'm going to go right to the edge of my paper so there's the back now I need to do the back yoke I'm going to again keep it right on that the edge of this armhole go up slightly for the shoulder I'm going to keep the neckline about the same because I don't want that to be gigantic now here on my pattern piece the center back is actually that thin line so I'm going to trace on the actual center back. I'm going to trace that seam line that I made and add a seam allowance. But I don't really want to cut this on the fold, so now I'm going to flip this over. I can still see it through here. I'm going to match up on the actual center back. And I can still see where that seam line is, so it looks good. So I'm going to put the seam allowance on there okay come up add a little bit more for that shoulder because I kept the neckline about the same and I keep the armhole about the same so there's my yoke for the back and now I just need a sleeve now this sleeve was the actual length of the arm so I'm not going to make it quite as long because I want to add a cuff so here I'm going to and I want my sleeves to be a little bit fuller than a regular just the arm so I'm going to add a quarter inch at least on both sides but I'm going to be about a half inch short from that original sleeve length because like I say I want to add a cuff so I'm going to add a quarter inch on each side to add more fullness but I don't want it really full for a dress shirt I don't want real big puffy sleeves so I'm going to add that much and I'll add a little bit more to the shoulder for a little bit more of a better fit there we go a little bit more to the edge of the shoulder there we go because we're going to put in some stay stitching and adjust that then I always indicate here uh, which side is the front and which side is the back uh, just kind of helps to to lay a little bit better and then lastly I need the cuff so for the cuff it's just going to be a rectangle that will match the length of my shirt so this is three and a half so I'm just gonna do three and a half and I'm gonna make that about a little over an inch well for the actual cuff and I, I'm gonna keep seam allowance in there so I've got a rectangle here that's three and a half by one and three quarters so that give me yeah well my need to be a little bit more like one and a half there we go when I actually sew that together all right so that will be my sleeve cuff on a dress shirt and there we go so next I just mark in with my marker
and there are pieces for a basic button-up shirt with the front, the pleated back, which this will be sewn uh, or cut on the fold, and then once that's folded, we can do the pleat and then attach it to the yoke. Then we have the sleeves and the cuff. So there's all the pieces for a button-up shirt. So thanks for coming by, and I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have fun making your own patterns, so give it a try. This pattern, of course, will be posted on the blog, on the website, on the Ready to Print page. So you can go over there and download that if you'd like to give it a try. Or go ahead and make one for your own doll, your own size, and uh, have fun creating. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.